Hi, I'm Charles with Anycap. A commoner is given one chance to survive. He tries to fight for his life, but he is just mocked for using his pitiful magic. In this world, lineage, talent, and diligence are the most important things to be a mage. Unfortunately for our protagonist, no amount of diligence can make up for a lack of talent. The guy in charge tells him that magic will never smile upon him, and he uses real magic to eliminate the poor guy. As his body gets roasted, our protagonist loves magic so much that he calls the spell used to end his life magnificent. He admires the magic that can be used by a noble, and he calls it beautiful. His one wish would be to have learned more about magic, even if he couldn't use it effectively. The poor magic lover dies, but wakes up soon after. He finds that he is surrounded by giants, and tries to defend himself with the fireball, but his hands are tiny. Surprisingly, his fireball attack works. Outside, a huge celebration is held, as it is announced that the Salem Kingdom's seventh prince has been born. Our protagonist has been reborn as Prince Lloyd, and everyone is in shock when they see how much damage the little baby's fireball did. Years later, Floyd has grown up a bit, and he hides from his maids. He is asked to go on a raid, but our boy is too busy trying to escape from these maids. The knights decide to just let him be, since unfortunately for Lloyd, he is much younger than his brothers, so that puts him out of contention for the crown. One of the knights doesn't think that gaining the kid's favor would be worth the effort, but the other knight explains just how wrong he is. Floyd is amazing since he could speak shortly after birth. He was reading spell books instead of picture books. Also, like a true gentleman, Lloyd refused to drink milk from the source. Most importantly though, this guy thinks that Lloyd might be the reincarnation of the great mage known as William Bardot. William is known as the father of sorcery, so this just sounds ridiculous. Lloyd confirms that he was reborn, but he was actually just a commoner in his past life. He has no clue why he was reborn, or why he was so lucky to become a privileged seventh son of a royal family. Floyd doesn't actually care about standing or glory, and he's just following the same philosophy he had in his past life. Finding out how much awesome magic can be discovered in the world is all Floyd cares about. His new life comes with a huge library for the little nerd to enjoy, but Sylpha the Maid stops him. The two immediately start sparring, but Lloyd doubts that he needs to learn the way of the sword because he has no shot at the throne anyway. Sylpha is quick to point out that there is more to life than royal succession. She was put in charge of Lloyd's education three years ago, and it has become her life purpose to teach Lloyd everything he needs to know, and that includes sword fighting. Lloyd realizes that the practice won't end unless he puts on a good showing, so Floyd attacks with more force. Sylpha is pleased to see that he's getting stronger every day, but Lloyd thinks about how she always holds back. Floyd is a magical genius, as he reveals to us that he's using control type magic to trace all of Sylpha's moves. From her point of view, she's pretty much just fighting a mirror image of herself. The mischievous little nerd thinks about how he's really just cheating, so he can go back to reading. The two continue fighting for now, and Lloyd acknowledges that Sylpha has him beat in strength, stamina, and height. He is able to copy her techniques with magic, but those other things put him at a disadvantage, and usually he loses. Lloyd decides that this is the perfect time to use today's experiment. He will use the difference in their physical abilities and cheat just enough to compensate. Lloyd uses a physical enhancement and levitation spell on himself. The difference is noticeable and Lloyd uses a combination of physical attacks and magic to fight more evenly now. The fighting intensifies, but Lloyd is a pretty confident kid. He has been fighting Sylpha as her mirror image perfectly, so he is sure that he can win if he makes one different move. Floyd releases his trace spell and surprises Sylpha with an unexpected move. He apologizes for having to end the fight, but thinks about how he has to get back to reading. Surprisingly, Sylpha blocks the attack, and what's even more shocking is that she knows he was cheating. She wipes the kid out and points out that the difference in his reach was too noticeable. He used levitation to make up for their difference in height, and he even grew his wooden sword. Her anger turns into admiration, and she is astounded to see that he could use two spells at once, as even the court's magicians find that to be really difficult. In reality, Lloyd was using four spells, as he thinks about how she didn't notice the physical enhancement and control magic. Her brain would probably explode if she found out that he could use four spells at once, so he decides to keep that a secret. Afterwards, Lloyd is forced to take a bath, even though all he wants to do is read. The maids warn him about spending too much time in the library because the Forbidden Library's demon will appear to eat him alive. A long time ago, Salem was nearly destroyed. 
After the sacrifice of countless mages, the demon behind the attack was sealed away in a book, and its name is Grimoire. Sylpha is sure that Lloyd wouldn't be afraid of something like that, but he is trembling in fear. The girls argue about who will get to sleep with the scared kid, but Lloyd uses this opportunity to get away. It turns out that Lloyd isn't afraid of the demon, he is just excited to find this forbidden library that's somewhere in the castle's basement. That night, Lloyd uses wind magic to reflect the light around him, and he makes himself invisible. One guard tells the other to stay on his toes, since there is magic in the forbidden library that could shake the entire kingdom, not to mention that the sealed demon is also inside. This all sounds perfect to our adventurous protagonist, so he makes his way into the basement. The dumb guards are sure that no one can get past them, but even if someone did, 10 mages cast their most powerful magic sealing spells on the entrance to create an unbreakable barrier. This is nothing for our boy though, so he easily breaks the barrier and is amazed by the forbidden library. Lloyd takes a peek at some of the books, but Grimmar reveals himself almost immediately. Lloyd introduces himself, so Grimmar wonders if the kid could be nice and break the seal. The seal has degraded over the years, so it's only a matter of time before it breaks anyway. Grimmar offers to give him endless amounts of gold, but he is shocked when Lloyd is able to tell that he was just using poor imitation magic. Grimmar is shocked by the kid's composure, as Lloyd explains that this kingdom is where he studies magic, so he can't let some dangerous demon destroy it. Grimmar points out that he doesn't hold any grudges to the people in this day and age, but Lloyd doesn't believe him. Grimmar makes another attempt to convince Lloyd and offers to teach him some ancient magic, stuff that's been lost for hundreds of years. Grimmar is really speaking Lloyd's language now as the kid gets really interested. Grimmar can tell that Lloyd has a lot of talent and this makes Lloyd remember how he was told that magic would never smile upon him. Lloyd declares that he now has a more privileged body than a commoner, but Grimmar just wonders who talks this way about themselves. Lloyd lifts the seal and prepares to learn some ancient magic. The devious grimoire just attacks him with an insanely powerful spell, and he wonders if this is enough of a lesson for Lloyd. With Lloyd eliminated, Grimoire wonders what his next move should be, but he is shocked when he realizes that Lloyd is still alive. He isn't just alive though, Lloyd is amazed by the unique attack, and he hopes that Grimoire can show him some more. Grimoire attacks furiously, but nothing he does can break the barrier. Grimoire is losing his mind to anger, but our boy Lloyd is super calm, and he uses his barrier to analyze all of Grimoire's attacks. This kid just can't help himself as he wants to feel the attack even at the risk of dying again. Grimoire is then absolutely stunned when Lloyd allows the magic to surround his finger. It's incredibly painful, but the magic obsessed Lloyd can still admire its beauty. Lloyd asks for more so the enraged Grimoire uses some time to summon an even more powerful spell. Synchronizing two incantations for a spell at once is generally impossible, and it's a special type of casting, only usable by a demon capable of having two mouths. Grimoire is screaming his brains out to unleash the most powerful attack he can muster, but our boy Lloyd is just analyzing the attack. Grimoire is shocked when his most powerful magic couldn't even scratch the barrier, and Lloyd admires how much effort it must have taken to get so powerful. Grimoire decides to run away from this crazy kid, but he's stunned to see that Lloyd put up another barrier. Grimoire assumes that he created it to keep him from running, but Lloyd reveals that he made a mistake a long time ago, so he made sure to be more cautious about everything moving forward. Grimoire prepares to attack again, but Lloyd is done analyzing his attacks. Lloyd powers up a powerful spell of his own and demands that Grimoire show him what he can do on defense. Lloyd unleashes a massive fire attack, and Grimoire wonders where all this mana is coming from. It's too late though as Lloyd's attack absolutely fries the demon. Lloyd points out that he didn't block the attack, but the demon just wonders who this crazy powerful kid is. Grimoire then bears witness as Lloyd restores the entire room after it had been blown to bits. Grimoire has never met such an amazing mage before, so he has started calling the kid Master Lloyd. Lloyd is amazed that Grimoire survived his attack, and this just makes the little psychopath curious about how much Grimoire will be able to survive. Grimoire doesn't want to feel the endless pain he would go through while Lloyd tests him, so he pledges himself to the kid. He offers to serve as his familiar, so Lloyd agrees. To not be found out, Grimoire transforms into the cutest animal he can, but he thinks about what he's really doing. He's using this cute exterior in the hopes that Lloyd will eventually let his guard down so he can get the drop on him. Lloyd tells the demon to get in his pocket, but Grimoire thinks about how that's a foolish decision. It works for him though since if he gets that close to Lloyd, Grimoire is sure that he'll be able to control his mind and take over his body. 
Grimoire hops on, but he is stunned when he feels Lloyd's mana. Grimoire can't understand how it can be so dense, and he realizes that he won't be able to control a single finger on this monster. Grimoire doesn't think Lloyd is human, and he trembles in fear. Lloyd wonders if he's just cold, and Grimoire completely changes his tune to tell Lloyd that he can just call him Grim. Grimoire decides to be obedient for the time being, and Lloyd happily runs off to start doing some reading. Sometime later, we watch as the noble prepares for his day and makes his way through the mansion. In the library, Grim warns Lloyd that someone is approaching. Lloyd tells him to hide, and we learn that this noble is Prince Albert. Albert gives a demonstration of his power and amazes everyone when he's able to hit a target perfectly with his magic. Albert is the second prince of the Salem Kingdom. He excels at everything so much that everyone believes he will be the one chosen to be the next king. Albert has permission to access facilities like this one, and sometimes he invites Lloyd to come along. Lloyd is not able to use much of his magic in the castle, so he appreciates it when Albert invites him to the range. Lloyd is up next to give a demonstration, but he's not interested in the throne. Therefore, he does not need to impress anyone. Besides that, if he showed his true power, he would be forced to get involved in the power struggle between princes. Lloyd hates that idea since all he wants to do is research sorcery and peace. Grim wonders what he will do about the demonstration, so Lloyd explains that he will simply make his fireball curve so that they only graze the targets. Lloyd says it so simply, but Grim thinks that takes even more skill than just hitting the targets. Lloyd fires away and just barely grazes each one. Spectators are disappointed about it, but Grim thinks about how they should have realized how impossibly difficult it is to control magic so accurately. The magic-loving Lloyd doesn't pay them any attention, and just thinks about how he could improve his technique even more. Albert seems like he might know something, but he doesn't mention anything, and just says that Lloyd can stay while he takes a break. Lloyd couldn't be any happier, as there are so many things he wants to try. Lloyd wants to start by trying the dual incantation that Grimm did, but Grimm frantically tells him that it's impossible. That is an ability unique to demons that can form extra mouths. Lloyd thinks that he might have a solution though. He surprises himself when his idea works, but Grimm is shocked and points out that no sane person would ever try incorporating a demon into their own body. Well, that's exactly what Lloyd did, so he tells Grimm to try and cast an infernal fireball. Grimm declares that this will be a piece of cake for a demon of his caliber, but he freaks out when things don't go the way he planned. Grimm is terrified and wonders what Lloyd did. Lloyd explains that it was just a spell stack, a technique for compressing incantations. By reciting several incantations at once, Lloyd is able to shorten the time to cast a spell. Lloyd has taken this to an extreme level, as he casually says that he was just reciting about a hundred spells in each line of the incantation. Grimm is stunned at how casual he is being, and points out that even as a powerful demon, he can only stack two or three lines at once. Lloyd does his next test, and finds that he can now talk out of both mouths. Grimm panics as he fears that Lloyd is going to recite two advanced spells at once, but Lloyd just silences him. An immense power begins to flow through him as Lloyd uses the Infernal Fireball and Water Bolt spell. Grimm's panic reaches an all-time high as he realizes that Lloyd is weaving two incredibly advanced spells together. The mana is intensifying to incredible levels and Lloyd couldn't be more excited to see what kind of power Dual Incantation brings. Lloyd realizes that he can't release the power on the ground so he simply sends it into the sky. This still results in a display of power that can be seen from far away. In the castle, some servants wish that Albert wouldn't spend his time with Lloyd, since Lloyd is just a kid and he isn't very good at magic. Albert tells them that they are just blind. He reveals that Lloyd was able to graze all the targets perfectly in the exact same way. He did it on purpose, so Albert calls Lloyd a genius. Albert predicts that Lloyd could even become the Grand Sage and hopes that he will be his ally. The servants are sure that he will be able to convince him, but Albert points out that he just wants to get along with his little brother. Albert predicts that Lloyd probably already knocked down all the targets, but the servants once again doubt Lloyd's ability. They think that knocking down the targets so fast would be impossible for the kid, and the servant wonders why it's so dark outside. We see why as Grim shakes in fear after seeing that Lloyd blew a hole right through the atmosphere. Lloyd panics as he doesn't want anyone to find out, but luckily things go back to normal. This was a pretty crazy event, so the terrified Grimm once again wonders just who the heck Lloyd is. The next morning, Grimm gets fed up with doing a bunch of maid duties for Lloyd. 
He calms down though and reminds himself that he must make sure that Lloyd has a clean and healthy lifestyle in preparation for when he takes over his body. Later, the tear in the sky makes it into the newspaper, but no one knows what caused it. Lloyd might have some serious ADHD though, as he has already moved on. He is now more interested in a new story about high-ranking adventurers. They cleared a high-difficulty dungeon and returned with precious treasures and magical items. This sounds super fun to Lloyd, so he decides to go to a dungeon. Grim points out that Lloyd will cause a mass panic if it's found out that he's gone, but Lloyd reveals that he has a solution. Grim is then confused when Lloyd brings out an acorn. His confusion turns into amazement when Lloyd uses it to create a wooden replica of himself. It's actually a pretty complex replica, as Lloyd gave it nerves among other things. That way, it not only looks like him, but it can also do simple movements on its own. This still isn't enough, as Lloyd points out that he would have done this sooner if it was sure to work. Unfortunately, it is not, since the real problem is Silpha. A look back shows just how much she obsesses over Lloyd, as she noticed that he grew a quarter of a millimeter taller. This silly dancing dummy he just created won't be enough to fool her, but Lloyd has a new solution for that too. He heads outside and we see that he left Grimm in control of the replica while still being able to communicate with him through his hand. The maids adore how cute he is, but Grimm thinks about how crazy Lloyd is. Lloyd transferred Grimm's soul into the replica and incorporated his soulless body into his hand. Lloyd leaves the rest to Grimm and Grimm admires how real the replica feels. Soon he realizes that Lloyd isn't there to stop him and he gets some devious ideas in his mind. Just then, Lloyd tells him that he really enjoys having Grimm as his familiar, and this brings tears to his eyes. Lloyd wonders if something is wrong, but Grimm just tells him to just hurry up and finish with the dungeon. Lloyd realizes that he doesn't know where to find a dungeon, and Grimm notices that it looks like someone is being attacked nearby. This isn't the case though, as the seemingly helpless girl turns on her pursuers, and she absolutely destroys them. She demonstrates her amazing fighting abilities, and Grimm points out that she must be a martial artist. Lloyd has read about the breathing technique she is using. It allows a person to put an energy called Ki into their body, granting them extreme strength. The girl is able to spot them somehow, but that's okay with Lloyd since he wants to learn more about her technique. He begins to panic though, when Grimm points out that she might recognize him as the seventh prince. His silence makes the girls think that he is an enemy, so the guys panic as he makes her way to them. Luckily, Lloyd manages to change his appearance just in time and introduces himself as Loberto. Lloyd used a spell that allows him to transform into someone he has seen before. He used the newly learned dual incantation to combine his appearance with Albert's to create an original look. The girl introduces herself as Tao and Lloyd worries that she might suspect something since she isn't turning around. It turns out that Tao is actually panicking because she thinks Loberto is a hottie. Tao has spent all 18 years of her life training. She eventually escaped the dojo and became an adventurer in search of romance. Unfortunately for her, this hasn't worked out since most guys prefer frail priestesses. Her time has finally come though, so she vows to make Loberto her boyfriend. She looks pretty busy, so Lloyd decides not to ask her to clear a dungeon with him, but she jumps at the chance. When they enter a dungeon, Tao is eager to show him her fighting prowess, but our boy Lloyd is too busy obsessing over some glowing rocks. Tao is impressed by how much Lloyd knows about her breathing technique, and she explains that learning about Ki begins and ends with breathing. Proper breathing fills your whole body with Ki, and it allows a person to release a burst of superhuman strength. The problem is that it takes a lot of training to even start sensing the Ki in one's body. That is why Tao recommends that Loberto spend his time finding the key to her heart instead. Lloyd completely ignores the corny joke and he shocks Tao when he's able to use a breathing technique. He explains that he just copied her, but she warns that if he's not used to it, he will feel like his lungs are burning. Lloyd is just as crazy as always though and just keeps doing the technique. He surprises himself when he's able to feel the energy inside of him and becomes excited when he realizes that he will be able to apply this power to sorcery. Tao decides that she will help him learn about Ki and instructs him not to stop the breathing technique until they leave the dungeon. Back home, Grim thinks Lloyd is crazy because he has such a comfortable life but he doesn't care for it. All he cares about is learning more about sorcery. Things are going pretty smoothly for Grim but he is shocked when Silpha makes an appearance. Back in the dungeon, Tao chose Loberto a key blast and uses it to defeat the dungeon boss. 
They are rewarded with a chest, but Tao explains that a dungeon that hasn't grown much won't have any good loot. As they look at the chest, Tao is amazed to see that Loberto has already learned the key breathing technique in such a short period of time. Tao realizes that she just hit the jackpot. If she can manage to get Loberto into a student-teacher affair, then her caretaker will have no choice but to accept him as her fiancé. Tao goes to open the chest, but Lloyd must rescue her as it had a deadly trap. A lich emerges from the chest, and Lloyd wonders if this is the real boss of the dungeon. Thanks for watching my recap. Sign up to my free newsletter if you want to show some support to the channel. Link is in the description.